What I wanted to do in this video was actually respond to a comment that came in talking about the alarm dashboard within Metasys MUI. Uh, for those of you all who do not know, the this is version 14 that we're currently running, so you do have this notification along the top. Uh, if you are running a previous version, you will not necessarily see this in your system. However, what you will see is this little notification bell and this is what you can use to access the alarm dashboard and you can see here once you press that this is what you're going to see you're basically going to see all the alarms as they come in to your system now the question that was asked is about how this can be made to be a little more user friendly and while each site is a little bit different I just wanted to take some time here to talk about one of the ways that we use this to make it more user friendly. Now you can see a difference between warnings as well as alarms in here. The warnings are going to come in as yellows and then the alarms are going to come in as reds. One of the ways that we use this is that we prioritize our alarms and I'll get more into the details on that later in the video. Uh, for now what we can do is we can actually sort the alarms by priority by clicking right here on this and what it's going to do is it is going to list them from the lowest priority number to the highest priority number you know you, as far as how that goes you can see it here uh, we're beginning with one now just the way that we use this is something that requires someone to physically go out and reset something we set those as a priority level of one that way when we come in of a morning or whatever we can simply hit the alarm dashboard sort through priorities and then we can go through and dispatch whatever we need done to send technicians out to resolve the issues this is one step that will really help make this a more user-friendly system you can download all of the alarms that are within your system as a CSV or as a PDF depending on what you want to do. You can also go and apply filters and you can sort them based on time, you can sort them based on alarm type and you can see all of these search criteria here you can select but again we're just going to go through some of the ways that we currently use them and just give a few thoughts another way that you can use these is if you have for example multiple buildings on your system and you have different technician groups that are within the uh, your organization what you can actually do again is sort them based upon an alarm priority and you can assign like a different priority category like you can do all increments of 10 or for one group 20 for another group it really depends on what you want to do within your organization uh, for us you know that's one of the first things that we want to know is are there any alarms that need someone to physically go and reset that system and if that's that's what we do here on this and now if I click into one of these the option that I'm going to be given here on the right hand side is I'm going to give get a an equipment you know it's going to tell me what equipment this is uh, the spaces that it's in and so on it's going to tell me the occurrence category and just a lot of the information on this as well as any previous times that this alarm has been active and one thing you can do as well you can acknowledge the alarm and you can add an annotation for example if you had si assigned a technician to go to look at the alarm if there had been a work order generated or whatever you can add the note those notes right into this section here you can also set up quick notes which we're not going to be talking about in this video that's something I'll expand on in a future video so be sure to subscribe 
for that upcoming content. And once you select whatever you're going to do, or put your note in there, you can select acknowledge, and then it is going to put a green checkbox on that. Okay, you can use that as a way to basically say that you have notified someone, and then if you hear back from them, another thing you can do is you can go back in and then you can discard that alarm. You know, again by selecting the discard on the right hand side and then selecting or adding your note or whatever and then hitting delete and it will pull that alarm out of your system just like that. Uh, another thing that you can do is from this panel is you can literally go in and look directly at the alarm. You can go into that equipment and just clicking that on the right hand side and it will take you to that piece of equipment where you are getting the alarm from and that is another way that it can be used as far as organizing your system. Uh, there's a lot of functionality in this. Again, the main thing is by going in and setting up the priorities, setting these alarms up. I know it's very common for people to skip over some of the things within the alarms and not setting them up as they should. So let's take a little closer look at this. This particular alarm here is on a supply fan status on an air handler. So we're going to go to that air handler and we're going to look a little deeper into what we have. And I'm going to talk about how you can prioritize these. Here's our supply fan. I'm going to go to the network tree because I want to be able to see all of the extensions and everything. So I'm going to click on that status and then this blue line right here that is going to take me straight to the network tree where I can see that piece of equipment and expand it out and be able to see the alarms. This is my point, the supply fan status. Here are my extensions. I'm going to click on the alarm and once I have that up this is where I can go in and set things up where I can sort them by priorities. Of course I do have a report delay. You know I want to give it a little time in the morning for when that fan is first commanded on. I don't want it to instantly flag an alarm so there is a delay there. I do have a command reference set up as far as it's looking at the command and that's going to follow that and so on. I can set up here my alarm acknowledge pending, alarm acknowledge required. If I do not want to require someone physically uh, acknowledging that alarm on the system, I could set that to false. But there again, guys, if you're going to make this useful, you might want to leave that to true. And this is the key right here, your alarm priority. As I mentioned earlier, this is how you can set those priorities to whatever you want. We currently have this to a priority level of one, so if we get a supply fan status alarm on this particular air handler, it's going to appear at the top of our list when we sort them by priority. So by setting an alarm priority for each of the alarms, you can sort them based upon that priority. And that's one way to add a lot more of the functionality to the alarm dashboard within your system. Again, you can set these up in groups. You really just need to think about how your organization is structured. Anyways, guys, hope this answers a few questions for you all. If you have anything in specific, let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to check out all the videos on my channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. I really appreciate it. Help to grow the channel. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. Check out the rest of the videos on my channel, and we will see you next time.